only other things that I was going to address was taking into account the health department's rules, which we have those. Which we have. Did y'all get a chance to look at it? I did. Um, and one of the things it talks about is a registration number. And so specifically, they're, they're kind of calling out, I'll say a license number, registration number, or something along those lines. Um, at some point, it was the question of, to be harmonious, are we going to need to add that language? And A registration number, like a permit number for the facility? I would think it would be akin to a permit number. That's what I took from it. And yeah. so I, I kind of gave some initial language on here on incorporating that so that we're not only issuing them the license, but the permit number and the registration number. Okay. Or is that one and the same thing uh, that generally? Would, typically that's one and the same thing, okay. and it's usually generated however we're going to um, keep these in our database, and that's being determined now. Okay. Um, that's just a number that's generated that is then used by sales tax, miscellaneous tax, right. all those, the unique ID. And uh, it will be tied to the health department as well as ABC and everything else for the seed and sale tracking. Okay. So um, that number will be issued and determined. I don't know that we can put it in here, but it's probably not as critical as their number for the purposes of identifying patients. But send me what you've got and I'll put it in. It was just more to try to say, hey, we're going to issue a number. Yeah, and, um, and which we I figured we would have to yeah. anyway. It's just yeah. whether or not you want to spell it out or not. Okay. Those were that's really the bulk of all my other changes. I've got several spots where I think it'd be appropriate, but okay. I can let you look at yeah. it. Yeah. That's what I do. Okay. So um, the next um, packet was the medical marijuana draft regulations for dispensaries. And the first draft changes on page four under the section E. Applicants electing to cultivate medical marijuana on the premises of the dispensary shall provide proof of assets or certainty bond in the amount of two hundred thousand and proof of at least a hundred thousand in liquid assets. And we voted for that last meeting. As well, we need to discuss um, non those who don't cultivate, or non cultivating cultivate, and um, how that should be. Put. Specifically, you're talking about the transition from someone who. Well, work. yeah, because if you look at the um, the proof of access and. A surety bond is totally different for dispensary right. versus dispensary and cultivation. And so if an individual says, well, I'm just going to get in, I'm going to do dispensary, but I decide to cultivate, am I going to have to go back? I could come in at two months and just do dispensary, and then just at the third month decide to cultivate. How do we handle that, or do we look at it as um, a renewal? At a, at a time of renewal. We have to put that in there saying that you can't go from non-cultivate um, to cultivating within that renewal cycle. So I, I would envision they would have to request that of the commission that they want to change their status. Yeah, we have to and put it in the regulations. Okay. Yeah. And then we would have to, they'd have to pay the fees, the additional fees associated with it. I mean, eventually we're going to have to have a renewal application, you know, and so I, I would just see, they would just check the box that says we want to grow too. Right, so I, I've added um, a provision in here in section 18 under license restrictions that states they cannot switch from uh, no grow to grow without receiving approval from the commission. So one thought is, and I think renewal is definitely the best time to do it. I think the rule right now reads that they've got to submit a renewal application within 60 days prior to the expiration, which um, is currently hopefully being changed to be on the fiscal year. Um, and to your point, they could just add, and I can work that language back in, okay. in a separate section or, or whatever that they So it's kind of like if you had an individual who just wanted to spend something, they got comfortable with it and said, two 
years down the line on renewal, they could they want to renew it, but they want to do dispensary and cultivation at that time. But then they have to go back and meet the requirements of the renewal for dispensary cultivation. Right. They have to pay the fee and they yeah. have to do the same thing. Yes. So that and that is what fee should they pay? Should they pay the difference? Do you want them to post the performance bond? Because this yeah. will be a dispensary that's up and running. Yeah, they would have to go back and meet the but they wouldn't, proof they of that. wouldn't be up and running as far as the growing side. That's true. Right. right. So, I mean, you know, they're still, yeah, they could be the world's best retailer. But okay, that's easy. That point, you just have to repeat it. Like, yeah, just repeat it. They have to repeat it. They just have to start. I don't think they'll make it any different. Yeah, that requires more square footage. If you're, you know, some kind of a small retail right. area, it's kind of security, it's different totally kind of different. regulations. Well, you know, it's highly likely that when they did that, they would be trying to move the facility. So they may be already trying to change locations or something like that, because if you just go into the storefront to start with and you want to grow, it's going to take, to your point, a lot more space. Yeah, we do it on, they have to apply and do it on the renewal, but they have to wait for that renewal period. I think that's, makes it easy. One of the other questions which I just got asked by